is I want to advise you about how to search for a spouse and what are the boundaries and limits in accordance with Islam. In saying that, I need to talk about the reality of this world as well. For me to sit here and tell you the traditional, traditional way, like the way they used to live in the past in Mecca and Medina, is impractical. I'm not going to sit here making life so hard and telling you that you've got to live like them. It would be ideal that there is no communication between men and women who are not related to each other, and the way to get to know her or him is to go straight to the father when you hear about them, and that's the first place you see her and you talk and under supervision and so on and so forth. But in reality, in our life, we have social media, we have the internet. You talk to the young people, teenagers, and if I'm going to sit there and say, don't talk, you can't talk, boy can't talk to girl, girl can't talk to boy, they might say to me, inshallah, but they're going to think, well, it's normal. Boys talk to girls, girls talk to boys. Isn't that right? In school, they have group chats in the school, they're all together, they talk. To sit there and say, don't talk, it's not really going to work. That's the reality. Some people may get upset with me and say, why are you saying this? Inshallah, it's better to avoid it, brothers and sisters. But I'm saying in reality. In reality, people do talk. So instead of just cutting it off and them doing it behind our backs, let's talk about a solution. Let's talk about employing it. Let's direct them. Let's guide them. The idea with teenagers, if you're a parent, is to discuss with them. Why, daughter? Why, son? What are the fears? What are the ramifications? What are the consequences of chatting with, you know, the, the, with you know, boys and girls chatting together on the internet and, and so on? Talk about the fears and ramifications. Let them think. Have a discussion. Because you can't have control over, especially with teenagers, you have less control over them. So, the scholars of today have spoken and said, look, the minimum minimum, if a person truly has good intentions for marriage and they can talk with the person respectfully, they know themselves and they can uh, respect the boundary so it doesn't become inappropriate between them and it's truly for marriage, they can talk necessarily as much as it needs to be but to try their best to move from that step to the next step. Some sisters ask me, when is a guy, when, how do I know a guy is playing me? How do I know a guy is just wasting my time? We say, well, there are a few signs. One of the signs is, well, one, one person said to me, bro, it's easy. Just tell her to tell him, um, this is my dad's number, give my dad a call, we'll talk over there. That's the easy way. And that's the way to know if he's serious or not. If he starts wiggling around, making excuses, you know, he's not really serious. But then there are some brothers, they say, look, let me just talk for a bit, and just before I go and make everything serious, they're very scared, they start getting stomach aches, and they start getting all these problems, I understand. And, you know, you can try. Uh, the sister knows that he's playing her, or I think, when she asks important questions. You know, like, um, look, I'll only talk twice or three times, I am interested in marriage, but after that, you know, I, uh, I'm going to tell my parents about this. And then if he starts wiggling around and changing the appointments and wants to keep talking and talking, then you know that this guy is trying to play games. Honestly, brothers, look. Look at your own sister or your own daughter. How would you like them to be treated? So really, you've got to use the brain rather than here or somewhere else. You need to use the brain. Brothers and sisters, it's very important that we respect each other. So these are the types of people when, and also when they are very, they hide everything. Yeah, so they're very private. They won't give, you know, they won't say who they are really. Sometimes they use nicknames. Um, they ask pressing questions and the guy doesn't really, is always hiding or the girl is always hiding things. So you can tell that they're wiggling around. This is just playing games. This is not serious. My brothers and sisters, I advise you, please stay away from these types of toying with each other. I don't want to start with all the stories because I want to get to the important part. However, there are many stories out there where things went really wrong. Shame is going down the drain. Shame is going down the drain. Self-respect, modesty, everything that was considered uh, harmful to each other from a sexual sense has become normalized. We don't have to be like that. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, those sisters are his property, Allah's property. He created them and we are Allah's property. We have to respect Allah's property. We have to respect them. I have seen many young people where they start chit-chatting and talking and they keep going on and on. Where do you think it's going to take you after two or three or four chats? It's going to lead to something else. If you don't start taking it seriously, the joking starts coming in, the sensual talk comes in, you start to let your hair down. I've heard about you know, sisters who come crying to me saying, young, girl, young you know, ladies, teenagers, they come for counseling and talk to me because I, I teach them and some of them who are older adults, they say to me, you know, this guy, I thought they was interested. He asked me for some pictures. I sent pictures without my hijab and I sent other things and then the guy just left me or uh, was lying to me. Some of them, they say, I found those shared my pictures with um, friends and with other people and really that's, that's often what is happening. My advice to you, brothers and sisters, is this. First of all, to the sister, one of the best ways, if he starts talking like that, say, well, you know, would you accept for your sister to talk the way we're talking? Test him out. See if this is okay. Since you're talking to them, test him out. Now, I'm not talking about when friends at school talk to each other. You've got a group chat, boys and girls talk about the weather or studies. It's not haram to do that. So long as everything is in boundaries, inshallah, and you're not private only together. So it's okay. Sometimes you may text each other even privately. What have we got for work tomorrow? If it's innocent, respectful, it's still okay. But my advice to you is share this with your parents. Like talk to your mum and dad or just talk to your mother if you're a teenager. And just let them be on your side in the picture because they can give you great advice. Okay? Um, and obviously there are exceptions. Some parents are, can be violent or something. So you've got to be careful with that. Uh, but in general, if it's something respectful and innocent, one off, two off, something about study, something, it's not a big deal, inshallah. In Islam, it's not a sin. However, when it comes to marriage and you're serious about it, my advice to you, brothers and sisters, is do not approach marriage until you are ready. Don't sit there like you're in, uh, you're still 16, 17 years old. You're probably not going to get married until five, six, seven years later. And you want to hold on to that person and say they're going to go away. You're not going to marry them until six years later. You're not serious right now. No one's going to go to anyone's house. No one's going to tell the parents. No one's going to take anything seriously. So what are you going to do in five or six years? I'm talking to Muslims here. Because there are non-Muslims who won't understand what I'm, what I'm saying. However, in Islam, we still hold on to these values, alhamdulillah. The respect between the man and the woman when it comes to um, physical contact and sexuality. We still have that, alhamdulillah. And Christianity used to be, back in the 50s. I remember watching a, uh, an interview with a young girl who was 15 or 16, subhanAllah, old in the 50s. Vintage type of uh, uh, audio um, interview. And she says, I will never have a boyfriend, ever. I will stay a virgin until I get married. These were the principles throughout history. But only now, after the 60s and 70s, did we have nudity and, and shamelessness and all this sexuality start to come out, subhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, it's very important. When you're ready, inshallah, make the move. If you're not ready, what are you doing four, five, six, seven years? Allahu A'lam, what's going to happen in that time? My advice to you is when you're ready financially, mentally, physically, then inshallah, make the move. And inshallah ta'ala, there's little room to keep mucking around, keep spending time. I said, M mucking that's an Aussie word so please don't misunderstand me so stop fiddling around and playing around games get get serious inshallah as much as you can brothers and sisters let's move on to the next path inshallah I'll leave some room for questions later on because I know I'm just touching on every bit and I know that you got questions uh, bismillah marriage here in Australia I have to say that by law you have to be 18 to get married and you need a court order if you're 16 so there has to be a reason to get married you can go and get a court approval if you're 16 to get married all right so i have to say that it's illegal to get married under that age but here's the point when you're ready inshallah make the move my beloved brothers and sisters in islam the search for a spouse is guided by a set of principles that ensure the relationship is built on mutual respect faith and shared values the first step is to seek a partner who possesses good character and a strong faith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized the importance of choosing a spouse based on their deen 
as this forms the foundation of a successful marriage it's essential to prioritize qualities like kindness trustworthiness and commitment to islamic teachings secondly involving family in the search process is encouraged in many islamic cultures parents or close relatives play an active role in helping to find a suitable spouse their guidance and support can help in making an informed decision families often have the wisdom and life experience to help identify qualities in a potential spouse that may contribute to a long lasting and harmonious marriage islam also encourages clear and open communication between prospective spouses within the boundaries of modesty and respect the purpose of these conversations is to get to know each other's values life goals and expectations this ensures that both parties share common ground especially on key matters such as faith family and responsibilities importantly these discussions should take place in a way that upholds islamic principles of modesty often with a guardian or family member present lastly turning to allah for guidance is a key partner of the process seeking his help through prayer specifically through istikhara can bring clarity and peace of mind by placing trust in allah's wisdom individuals are reminded that he knows what is best for them combining this reliance on divine guidance with practical steps helps ensure the marriage begins on a solid faith-based foundation help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description